Hey, what's up, guys? Sorry, y'all. Welcome back to the OS Rick Project. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, so I don't know which episode this is. I've been kind of recording them and st stockpiling them and getting them ready as they go, depending on what material I have, who I've spoken to, what I've recorded, what I've talked over. So I want to say this might be episode 11. Oh, and guys, this one might not have a video because at the time... I have like a really bad sty over my eyeball. So it looks like I have a pink little marble over my left eyeball and it is terrible. So this one might just be an uh, audio only. So just be warned. So, but you know, maybe down the road, I'll put the video up on the, on the, on the YouTube and you guys could check it out or something. But it just looks rough. It looks like, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's, it doesn't look so good. But anyways, guys, I just want to talk to y'all, see what y'all been up to, what's been up. Um, uh, this episode, I want to focus on the beginning, at least the first half of this of this sh episode. I want to talk about what we've been watching, what I've been watching, and just want to share with you guys. And of course, y'all always feel free to chime in, put down in the comments what y'all think about it, whether you disagree with me, agree with me. It's I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't expect everything that I watch to be in unison with you guys and, and vice versa, because if it was, then it'd be just really, really boring, yeah, honestly. So I, 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 there has to be different perspectives and different views on things that we watch. And I don't know how you guys feel about it, but lately, to me, when I see anything that's on the Disney side, it feels like they're, they're, they're on the woke side and they're just catering to individual groups every chance they get. And it, it honestly... The way I see it, it just doesn't feel genuine. It's almost as if though they 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 they'll, they'll put like uh, you know two people with the same gender kiss, or do something that's just you know like virtue signaling or just doing something to cater to a a, a, a certain group, and then it, it it doesn't feel like it has merit. They're doing it just to be. Hey, look what we did, guys. We're cool. Look at us. It's fine. Now you should just keep watching our stuff. Like that's the that's the vibe I get. It doesn't feel like they're doing it for for like representation or for positivity for just for the goodness of of, of a certain group or individuals. It, it really just feel like it's like if they just put they changed their background on their social medias just for a month just to celebrate one thing and then once that month is over like okay we don't care or you, you know exactly what i'm talking about guys it just it just it doesn't feel like it was it's genuine it just feels like look what we're doing guys we're cool and i really started noticing it during star wars I don't know what it was, but I think it shows it shows these two girls kiss after like celebrating um, destroying the Death Star for like the second time or third time. And I was like, OK, cool, fine, no problem. And then you see it again, like after like in the cinematic universe and the, the Marvel cinematic universe after like after the, the, the pandemic. I, and I really noticed it for sure. And look, guys, I know you guys are going to hear this. I'm kind of like nitpicking. And look, I have nothing against homosexuals or anybody that's different. Regardless, I don't care. It's fine. Be who you are. But when every series and movies just starts showing me that, like, uh, what about me? Like the straight guy, like, you're just going to alienate, like not alien, but just like make me feel awkward. It's like, okay, I get it. I, I know it exists. Do I have to see it every time though? <sighs> And it really came down to when I was watching Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange. I was like, okay, America's parents are lesbians and this multiverse she's from. I'm like, okay, fine. And then she has her little rainbow pin on her jacket that just has to remind you every time that she stands for, like, stands for something or is or something or, or what. Like, I don't get it. Or maybe it's just, or maybe I'm just looking too too much into it and it's just fashion from another multiverse and, and that's just what it is i don't know and then of course watching the recent thor love and thunder which was directed by uh yt waika taika watiti sorry i always get confused sorry guys taika waititi which i really much enjoyed 
I like it. I like. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed watching what we do in the shadows, which is on Hulu, by the way. So check it out if you guys have a chance. And of course, Thor Ragnarok. Hilarious, funny. It's probably my favorite Mar MCU movie that there is right now. Maybe rivaled by Winter Soldier. Uh, and okay, okay, it'll be like it'll be Ragnarok, and then Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War. Endgame was okay, and then I I did not like Thor Dark World. That one, that one was weak. But I noticed like in Love and Thunder, and, and people are saying like, oh, this just I don't know why they they feel like they always have to have a laugh every couple of seconds in that movie. I'm like. Dude, do you not know who the director is? That's like it's basically more of Thor Ragnarok, but they again going back to the whole being woke part. Like they call guys, and I'm trying to work on them on my speaking parts too because I'm I'm trying not to say like and um and what else I'm not trying to say. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. Trust me, trust me. I'm, I'm making like mental mental notes to catch myself before saying the my. I guess it's like my nervous ticks when it comes to me speaking. And you guys probably know me that I've been, if y'all really know me, I like, there it goes again. Since most of my uh, young life, since I was a kid, I've always been kind of like an introvert. And then this podcast has kind of helped me open up more and have, having to learn how to speak more and be able to th think my thoughts and then say them and not rush through it because I've always had a problem of just speaking way too fast and not being able to clearly say what I have to say. So I'm working on it, guys. Trust me. Believe you me. And it's sometimes it doesn't gonna, it's not going to sound clear. It might sound a little hazy, very different. Or sometimes it's just, it like, and, and I'm not even thinking. I'm just kind of like just going off the cuff. So I'm not here to piss people off or anything. This is just how I feel, okay? This is, this is just me, my thoughts of this time, at this moment in my life, because who's to say that I'm not that, you know, my ideas could change tomorrow or the day after, or I just see a different point of view. It's very possible. So going back to Love and Thunder, the, there was a part where they call Valkyrie King Valkyrie. I'm like, why are you? The, why are they calling you King Valkyrie? You're female, right? It shouldn't be queen. And what's wrong with being called queen? Like, it, like, what am I missing something? You, what's the king part? You're queen, you're female, uh, a Valkyries. That's what they all are. A sisterhood. She even says, like, she has a sisterhood and she lost some and she feels bad about it. So, why are you called king? Okay, okay, so that's fine. And then there was another part in the movie which I thought was weird. Oh, yeah, Korg. Like, Korg has two dads that. They get together and over a, a, a river of molten lava and they make little baby corgs. So, okay, because I'm pretty sure in Thor Ragnarok, you said your mom has a boyfriend who didn't show up for a rebellion. So it's like, uh, like I mean, if, if we're just doing it just to be silly, okay, I'm fine with that. Or you're just kind of just changing it up just to fit. Again, just to fit a certain narrative and, and to virtue signal and be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're down with homosexual stuff. It's okay. You're, you're the same. Se like, like I know, but, like, you have to, like, remind us. Like, that's, that's cool. And it feels like it, we're seeing that just in every movie now or everything that's Disney, whether it's on their, their Disney Plus stuff or on the movies. It's just like, okay. It doesn't have to be on all of them. And I hear, I mean, that's one of the reasons why maybe Lightyear didn't do so well. I'm not too sure. They try to, again, try to cater to a certain crowd, and then they remove the scene. And then uh, people got mad that they took it out or they put it back in. I'm not too sure. I I, I was kind of interested in watching it, but I don't know. It's just Disney being Disney. I, I just kind of am losing interest in what they're doing, which sucks because I like these franchises a lot. And I don't want to be that person that just supports it just because because it's something that I like. I can, after a while, if, if I'm not going to enjoy what I'm watching, I'm just going to stop. I've always been that kind of person where if you don't like something, just don't support it anymore. Just stop. We, you know, Don't give them attention. Don't give them dollars. Don't give them any talking. Just don't give them any like 
space to just don't just don't look at them just ignore it and i'm not saying just ignore it and it'll go away but it, it don't don't mention it because if, if you're not talking about it then that's what they start losing right because they don't have you know the the hearsay and and the mouth uh, word of mouth to, to keep them going so and i kind of noticed it too when i was watching obi-wan kenobi i i did like that show I, uh, but there were some aspects I just didn't like about it. And I think it came down to Reva's character. I, uh, my problem was whoever wrote her roles just didn't do a good job. I didn't understand why she was always just... Uh, it, her story felt like a, a lot. A lot. Very, very, very similar to the storyline of... Star Wars Fallen Order, the EA game, I kind of got those vibes where I'm like, okay, you got raised by a certain person, then you got betrayed, and then you want to get revenge. You know, a lot, I'm not saying one for one, but very much a lot like that. And almost kind of the same story as the as the Inquisitor in that game. So when I when when I th- it really started with episode two when I really started seeing Matt. I don't like this character. She was doing, she was running along the rooftops and just doing parkour. And with the force, like you're like a force tryhard. We like just go. Why are you using your like your? I don't know, guys. I don't know. It just the more I think about it, the more I think it's just like. I don't like the how she was written into the show. I like Ewan McGregor playing Obi Wan. He did such a great job. Uh, young Layla Morgana, she wonderful. I, I wasn't too crazy about her at first, but she really grew on me. The who else? Uh, the guy who played in the e- Eternals, who played the the Bollywood star. He wasn't in. in um, Oh, what's that Mike Judge show? Mike Judge show. It was on HBO. Silicon Valley. That dude, like, I don't know. Every time I see him, it feels like he's just being typecast, like, uh, like comic relief. Like, okay, here, there, cool. And I don't know. I like. I, I enjoy the show. And oh, when they had, uh, uh, young, not young Anakin Skywalker, but the the guy who played Anakin Skywalker, like teenage Anakin, like. I, I like how he showed up for the flashbacks so you could get more of the in-depth behind the scenes of how him and Obi-Wan uh, grew up together and learned the ways of the Force. And you could see how he was more divided and started going his own way, his dark ways, the dark side. But oh, overall, I just feel like just watching Disney stuff, it just feels like they're just getting woke. And, and, and I don't get it. It's it's fine, but after a while, it just becomes okay. Well, then I'm just, I just don't care anymore because I'm just going to see the same thing over and over, just virtue signaling. And and look, if 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 it doesn't bother you and you're fine with it, fine, enjoy it. I'm not telling you not to watch it. I'm just telling you that me as a in my perspective that I just I'm not crazy about it. And there's other venues to there's other mediums, other other shows that that go in that superhero direction and 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 change up the 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 style i don't know if you guys been watching amazon's the boys season three just wrapped up i just finished watching it and i really enjoy that series Uh, from the beginning when i first started seeing it it wasn't what i thought it would be it's a lot more dark and gritty and, and 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 terrible a lot of these characters you just don't like because they're just they're some of them are just real pieces of shit and I, I, I like how this show uses that and almost makes it look like this is a, how it's a, a very pessimistic way of how they can actually exist in this real world between a train always, you know, getting in trouble and trying to find a way out. And then he uh, has someone that gets hurt by by a soup and then he gets upset all of a sudden he becomes a super hypocrite or the actor who plays Homelander, I think it's Anthony Starr. I mean, this guy is really, really good. He, he, when, when, when I see this guy doing his role as Homelander, I could feel the craziness. Like, 
you just don't know what's going to happen if you're around this guy. Like I, I never feel safe for anyone when he's in the proximity of that of 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 that of that person because he just knows how to play crazy and like crazy just below the surface where you know it's there. Uh, all these other characters that's on there, the good guy, the good guys, Billy Butcher, Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and Huey, all of them. I, I really like that show because even though they're the good guys, they still are willing to do the gray stuff, you know, the, the, the shady stuff across the line to get their objective done, especially Billy Butcher, Carl Urban. He's just so exceptional, re really good. I, 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 I like him a lot for what he does and all the characters and the backstory. And even though it's a whole new, it's, it's, it's the same genre of heroes and villains with superpowers, there with since it's in a format of any like i think there are like eight episodes per season so you really get to flesh out these characters and it honestly just gets just darker and weirder and more bizarre and things you wouldn't expect to happen <sighs> i mean honestly i i like how that show's going and it took me a while to actually get into invincible because Invincible is another show, another series from Amazon, but it's just animated and it's almost like The Boys, but it's based off of, I think it's Robert Kirkland, the creator of The Walking Dead. I think that was one of his projects he did with these superheroes and it's almost like The Boys or The Boys is kind of like it, where it's these superheroes and they're all kind of, there's... They all have a, a, another side to them, and, and it's not always necessarily good. And you can really see it, and, and I really like that stuff a lot because it really is just different from what Disney is, where it just feels too polished and and and, 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 and almost fake to a certain point because it just feels like, man, that just doesn't make sense to me at all. And But, you know, as for just stuff that I've been watching, that's pretty much... Yeah, I mean, I have watched a couple of things here. I've been uh, on the anime side of things. I've been, I've, I've uh, I, I picked up an episode of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which wasn't too bad. Uh, I, I want to try that some more. Watch, pick up some more episodes. I want to continue watching more of Rise of the Shield Hero. That one took me a while to get into, but after a couple of episodes, once I understand why the character was this way. The way he's being treated, I like. I started like connecting with him more, so I'm I'm enjoying that show. And I recently went back to watch, and I watched it because someone talked about it on Twitter. But it was blood. It was Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, and surprise, surprise, I was able to watch it just on YouTube. They they had the whole they had the the the, the movie on there, ad free, and you were able to just type it in, and I was able to watch it. And I don't think it was anything bootleg. I'm just it was just like the movie. I guess it, I mess. I guess it's been out for a while. That if someone just put it up there, I guess they don't mind. And just watching that kind of animation, because I, I rec if I can recall, I th believe that movie was released in 2000, 2001. So you could tell the animation is just way different compared to how it looks like to anime from like nowadays. Because I might have told you guys before, I recently, uh, maybe a year ago, yeah, maybe a year ago, I watched Demon Slayer, and it's not too bad, but I like Tanjiro's character, but the other two uh, buddies, his two little sidekicks, I just did not like them at all. I felt they were too much on the opposite end of the spectrum, like on way opposite ends, where one's either a super crybaby and the other one's just a super high head screaming all the time. It's just like, there's no, Tanjiro is a happy medium. And, but, and everybody else is just like, it's just way too much. Like, guys, like, dial it down some, man. Like, it's okay to be the crybaby. It's okay to be the hot head. But that's your character 24-7. And I tried watching um, the following movie. Or, yeah, I think it's a movie. I don't think, or they made a season out of Mugen Train. I tried watching a couple episodes, but they were in Dream State. And I just... I don't know, man. And I do like the animation. I think it's wonderful when when Tanjiro gets up there and 
I could be wrong, guys, but when he says, you know, seven water strike and, and the, the camera pans out and he's going through and see the water coming out and they're using CGI to make it go through and, 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 and attack, that looks wonderful. I love it. But there's something about watching the older stuff like Vampire Hunter D or Trigun, you know, stuff from stuff from like the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. It's just there's a certain appeal to that kind of animation because you don't see it anymore. And to me, it feels like it really has aged pretty well. It doesn't look too rough. Even some of the older stuff that I watched, like uh, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, I know it's older, but I enjoy it still much, very much the same. So I, I, I guess, you know, going with CGI is something almost to maybe use it just to appeal to a younger audience, make it more flashier. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Or it could just be a sign of the business just moving on and adapting new technology, which is fine because you don't always want to be stuck in the same old ways because if you do, I think it was a line that I saw someone say, and I wish I knew who, who quoted it, but it was, people who do not want change are architects of decay. There's something along those lines, and it kind of makes sense because if you don't want to grow and change, you're just going to become the same old thing, and then eventually you just become stagnant and just fall apart. So I understand using technology in animes just to make it look flashier and better, but okay, to make it flashier, but I won't say it always makes it better. In To me... It's always going to come down to the story. This is why Death Note is one of my favorite animes because I just like the fact that even though the action isn't all there, it's all about the storytelling and the characters. And I think they really did a really good job with that one. And it was a couple of years ago when Netflix made... And Netflix has been kind of doing this where they'll get some of these animes... And they'll turn them into live actions. And I don't know if it's just Netflix themselves with their studios or they're just grabbing it from from or they're just grabbing it from other studios and putting it on their platform. But it feels like these live action ones are almost at least to me, the the Death Note one, that felt just really terrible. It, it, it had no I don't I don't I don't think it's it didn't add to the, the, the source material. And it might have even just hurt the source material, to tell you the truth. if Because if that's people's first foray into Death Note and they, like, and they say, oh, yeah, that live-action crappy movie that came out on Netflix, Death Note, yeah, I've seen it. Like, that's not good, that's not really good for the series because if if that's your first, 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 like any knowledge of that series is that live action one from Netflix. Oh man, it's gonna be kind of rough. So I, I because this, this this also makes me like want to segue into Cowboy Bebop. I know back in twenty twenty was twenty twenty one, twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. I th- I believe that's when they had they made the live action series of of Cowboy Bebop. I know some people were like did not like it at all. And actually, I'm I was kind of f- I was fine with it. Again, that's because I've been exposed to the anime way back when when I first saw it, back on Adult Swim in the late '90s, early 2000s. So I was I, that was my first exposure to Cowboy Bebop, seeing the anime. So when I saw the live action, my first impression was, man, this is different. But it wasn't. <laughs> The, the series as a whole, I, I did have some some things to say about it, but I don't think it was inherently the worst thing ever. It just wasn't as cool. Really, it just wasn't as cool as the anime because the, the anime, it has this, you know, these jazzy feel, the jazzy sound and moods to it. And and it could be very somber and melancholy sometimes. And then sometimes it could just really pick up and be action-y and, and, and fun and, and just be and just be something completely different. The live action, it felt like it just didn't have much of a purpose. And it, it if you were to say it took some liberties with the story, I'm kind of fine with that to a certain extent. But the characters that were a, 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 a mystery, they kind of they unraveled 
they 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 maybe dug too deep or gave it too much story like vicious i didn't like vicious this iteration of vicious it, it felt like i knew too much of him i, I liked barely kind of knowing what's going on with him from the anime so i mean yeah i could see how wanting to change things to bring another crowd is is, is fine at some things but at a certain point like just leave the original as it is and i i guess you could also you could segue this and you or think about it with final fantasy 7 the og version and the final fantasy 7 remake of course guys I, i've already talked to you about it and how i feel about it so i won't go um chew y'all's ear off but you know something along the line i i i didn't i don't think cowboy bebop the live action series took away from the anime series because the anime series even to this day honestly because i went back to watch it after watching that series it still held up it was still wonderful i still enjoyed it i still remember have the memories and and the sounds and everything just like the way it sounds the the, the style everything it, it, i was still able to recall and, and enjoy it very much so there was maybe one or two episodes where they were like kind of slow but other than that though overall that series was f- magnificent it really is so yeah going back to guys about the newer stuff taking away from the old i i don't think that's always true but sometimes it, it kind of does depending on i guess like how good or bad it is i'm not too sure but yeah guys that's kind of my rant on what i've been watching in going back to disney part there's some things i just i just i just don't always agree with and 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 it's fine. It doesn't have to agree with me 100% of the time because if it did, then, you know, it would just be, mm, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think it's, I don't think there's anything that always meshes with every, every single person 100% of the time. There's always has to be something different, but it just feels like they're just being too woke. And I, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I still want to watch some stuff. I, I really do want to want to see, the x-men show up because i really enjoyed them as as a kid growing up and then watching that scene in multiverse of madness when even though it was a multiverse you know they do have professor xavier show up so i want that to be maybe some sort of shoe in to bring in the x-men whether it's on a different multiverse it doesn't necessarily have to be the one where all the um the mcu has been taking taking uh, center stage at but i would like to see the x-men because I, I just think they're unique i mean if you think about it they kind of represent being different and outcast and 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 being you know even though you they are mutants and outcasts and different it's it's okay because they they they, they it showed it showed you that you could still get on with your life and, and adapt and, and 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 just because not everybody likes you it's it's okay not just because not everyone likes you because you're different it's okay because you could still find i don't know you could still it's it, the, i don't know man it's kind of hard to explain it but it it's almost felt like x-men were just something before what disney is trying to do now if that makes any sense i, I don't know guys i would have to really have to sit down and think about it and uh, <laughs> i don't know if i could do that right now i'll just be rambling but just think about it guys like if you look at the x-men everything i just said just being outcast and being fine with it and 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 and, and surviving and being on their own and and having to find other people and and it's still being okay and uh, i don't know and just being hated because you're different it, it, it resonates with with what it is what's going on today and i really think if, if, if Disney could do it right, if they're not too on the button, like how they have been with the, the, the previous run of shows, I think X-Men could be really, really good. I mean, not only does it have a fan base of the of an older crowd of like people my age, but it could all easily bring in the younger crowd and, and just everybody. I mean, I never heard anybody say that's a, a, a fan of EDC or Marvel say, I hate X-Men. Like, I've never heard that. Who says I hate the X-Men? They've always been unique and cool and just one of a kind, honestly. Um, what else do I want to talk about, guys? Oh, yeah, speaking of DC, I recently did go back and watch Suicide Squad, and, uh, James Gunn Suicide Squad, the second one. The first one... 
the first one like oh, oh. I'm going to have to put the video up here because I want you guys to see my face. The first one, when I first saw that they have Will Smith playing Deadshot, I was like, Will Smith playing Deadshot? Like, Will Smith is like, everything he plays is freaking cool. He, he always plays a cool character, whether it's Men in Black, whether it's in freaking Wild Wild West, whether it's... Uh, Independence Day. I mean, just name it. Every, every role you see Will Smith in, he always plays a cool character. I'd never seen Deadshot. I think his name's Floyd something, or I don't know what. Like, I never seen him as a cool guy. So it just felt like Will Smith is Deadshot. Like, okay, okay, let's, 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 fine, fine, fine. Let's, let's okay, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's see what they got. Man, we're gonna put Jared Leto. As a Joker. And you know what? Like, I am a big fan of Jared Leto. I was a big fan of Jared Leto until I recently saw that movie, him playing Joker. And then, again, recently watching Blade Runner 2049, seeing him play, uh, what's his name? The guy who owns all the robots. It's like, man, I think he's just a little bit over the top when every time he plays a role. I just, I just can't think of Jared Leto in a great role am i missing something guys i mean i look i'll admit it i like some of his stuff when he was in 30 seconds to 30 seconds to mars i think they're still around i like some of their music you know no doubt about that i enjoy some of that but when it comes to him acting i'm trying to look at it in retrospect and think where did he kill it in his acting part please guys like send me some comments or or, or, or something because like i'm trying to think of it I'm sure there's a role here or there that he's probably did really, really great in, and I'm missing it. And don't say Morbius. I swear to God, guys, do not say Morbius. But I just can't think of something where he just like nailed it. So, so when I saw him being Joker, I was thinking, okay, you know what? Everybody thought when they saw Heath Ledger playing Joker, it was gonna be terrible. Turns out, it was one of the best damn Jokers you've ever seen, up there with with Mark Hamill from the animated series. That's honest. Come on guys, face it. That's one of the best sounding jokers you ever heard. Uh, <laughs> you could say Caesar Romero <laughs> from the Adam West Batman, but that was a hammy AF. If that's your style, which I'm a Jojo's fan. So, you know, that's not a, that's not a far reach for me. Uh, but yeah, seeing Jared Leto as Joker, it was just like, and yeah, I was okay that they made like a different style. You know, he had like face tattoo. He looked like a mumble rapper and just, you know, just all like psychotic. Like I was okay with that look, but I don't know the way Jerry Leto just pulled him off. I just, it didn't land well with me. It, well, like it just felt like, okay, this is a different, this is obviously a different version of Joker. It just didn't, it just didn't fall well with me. That's it. So I was just like, okay, well, yeah. It is what it is, but overall, that that suicide scoot, so so that suicide scoot, that suicide squad movie. There it goes, guys. That's another thing I'm working on the podcast too. Just help pronounce it, pronounce uh, all my words and let them come out out of my mouth without just stumbling out. That movie just felt like um, okay, I'm fine. I, I I never went back and watched it again. But the the 2019 suicide squad is it 2019 2020 i won't say maybe 2019 that one by james gunn with peacemaker and Bloodsport, of course harley quinn and then uh rick flag played by joel mckinnon that one that one was so good I, even watching it the second time i still laughed i still had a good time uh i enjoyed the, every a- aspect of it. it i mean like never was i because you know how on some movies when they go to a different set of characters you're like all right, hurry up, get these get these characters done with so we can get to the next you know to the next set of characters. On, on, on Suicide Squad, no, I, I had a blast. I, I enjoyed every, every every time they went to different uh, different uh, to different scenes to different cast of characters. I loved it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I laughed. And just like th- uh, this is where DC really shines. They have these characters, 
and just lean into it. Lean into lean into the crazy. Lean lean into the stupid and silly part and just have fun with it. Especially the banter between Peacemaker and Bloodsport when they're going through the village clearing them out. Like that hands down just made me laugh. And I'm not, I wasn't a big fan of John Cena until I saw Peacemaker. Uh, until I saw Suicide Squad and then seeing the spinoff what they made from the show the the HBO series Peacemaker I really enjoyed it I had a blast with it and I think that's where DC can the DCU can really shine because they have these characters that are like C-list and they're just going silly with it I like it, it, it I, I laughed and of course, it's not just the actors because you know not only the John Cena and the rest of that cast did a really good job. It's also behind the scenes, the directors and everything, and the and the writing team because I like that sort of funny. I enjoy it. I know some people, you know, they might want the more dark, brooding, sinister side. I'm sure you could find that with you know in the all the Batman movies and stuff. But even the DCU, I just it, they they just never nailed it like Marvel did. I don't know if it's because they rushed everything or maybe some of their characters aren't as fleshed out as they did with Marvel, which is probably the probably the case, right? We've had Marvel Cinematic Universe being... When did it start? 2010? Maybe even earlier? I'm not too sure, guys. But ever since then, you know, starting with Iron Man and them giving them their each movies and actually having phases and planning it out... I was wonderful on that part. They were able to really bring all these, 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 these comic book characters to life and really flesh them out. On the DC side, you know, we all know, we all know Batman, we all know Superman. Okay, we kind of know Diane and uh, Wonder Woman for the most part. And then like, who's how many flashes is there? And Aquaman, Atlantean. Okay, who else do we have in there? And Oh, now they have now they're all together making a movie okay so i just i don't know and then dcu it almost feels like they just have they don't got their their, their ducks in a row because it almost feels like they, they they're trying to get something done and then they change a different to a different batman or they change different like movie sets or something and, and unfortunately the the chris nolan stuff just wasn't canon which was probably like the better Batman movies to this date. I mean, I did enjoy the Batman that, that came out recently with Robert Pattinson. I, I felt like it was really dark and broody. Like he, he he pulled off a really good Batman, not so much Bruce Wayne. And I think that's the that's where you get to the complexity of that character is Batman is two is two characters essentially. He's you you, you got to have an actor that could really play the duality of that persona because he's Batman and then his alter ego is Bruce Wayne. Or did anybody get triggered by that? Or is he bat or is he Bruce Wayne and his alter ego is Batman? I'll leave that up to you guys. Y'all can at me if y'all want. But Robert Pattinson, I, 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 he, I, I enjoyed his Batman. He's still young, still kind of making some mistakes, just going, he not really refined. But I really feel Christian Bale was a really good balance of both those roles. And speaking of Christian Bale, him in Thor Rag uh, Thor Rag and Thor Love and Thunder, he could really play crazy. He really can. I don't know much about Gore the God Butcher. And it felt just very kind of rushed. And it makes sense. You kind of have to like speed up the process. Like, yeah, he's he felt like upset, and now he's gonna take out his revenge out in the gods. That's why he's a god, but god butcher. But it almost felt like they could have just f maybe fleshed it out a little bit more. But with time constraints in the movie, you have to get the ball rolling asap. And it, it makes and the thing is, how do you make a powerful enough villain? For Thor, Thor is literally a god. He's a demigod. He's very powerful. So you have to have something. You got to have something really, really strong for him to fight. Because if not, because if you think about it, if I'm Nick Fury and I got to like, if I got uh, something happening and I got to end it, like I'm calling either Thor or Bruce Banner. 
like straight up. Like you, you call either one of those two, problem solved. If you want less collateral damage, you probably just bring in Thor. If you just want it wiped off the face of the earth, you bring in Banner. Done. It's set. Because honestly, if you think about it, those two are probably the most strongest ones. Physically, just the strongest ones. That's it. So, yeah, yeah. Christian Bale playing Gore. I liked it. I, I, I saw some images of how he looked like in the in the comic book series. He looked kind of like missing that flat nose and just kind of like different kind of aesthetic in the face. I like that look. And I don't know why they didn't lean into it. Um, maybe they still want to give him a humanoid kind of resemblance just to make him more relatable. I could see that part. but at, at, and, But on the backside of that same coin, it almost felt like, why not lean into the comic book stuff? He's he's humanoid in shape, but not human in features. You could give him that 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 kind of that pull back face and the the stuff coming out of his like almost like 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 a uh, like tentacles or something come out of the back of his head. Like he looked different, and I and I like that. It, it, very unique and 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 like I said, human like, but the characteristics not. But who knows? Um, uh, what else did I like about that movie? Oh, uh, Russell Crowe. No, Cut Russell? Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Uh, yeah, guys, I don't want... Uh, I'm just hoping, like, I, I know I've been, like, jumping around and I might have given some spoilers. I hope not. I'm going to start off this um, um, this episode with spoilers. I will be talking about Thor, Love and Thunder, sprinkled it in here, uh, in and out throughout the whole podcast. So just be cautious, guys. I'm sorry. And I'm hoping you would have caught it by now. What I did... I made I made plans with the wifey to watch it Saturday morning. We caught a matinee and we were able to watch it and enjoy it. That way, I don't get ruined by the internet or anything. And guys, I I'm I hope you guys didn't get spoiled by what I've been saying in this podcast. I'm gonna put something in the description, and be like, hey, spoilers all throughout the whole chit chat. So just be just be wary, or please just make sure you watch it first. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I liked it. It was my, it was, if you were to ask me the Thor movies, which ones are my favorites, it'll be Ragnarok, Love and Thunder, Thor, and then Thor Dark World. Dark World, I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I just felt like it was just boring. Just really, like, they needed to introduce the reality stone. As, and and it, it almost felt like they should have just, <laughs> I know they weren't doing, the Disney, Disney Plus wasn't around, but I almost felt like they could have just made like a little mini series, a six part episode mini series and introduced the rea- reality stone that way. I mean, of course, they had to flesh it out and make a movie just to build up, you know, f- the the infinity. The what, what phase was that? Was that phase two, phase three when they introduced the infinity stones? Um, What else, guys, do we want to talk about? Anything else I've been watching I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, and I don't know I've been bouncing around guys everywhere. Uh, well, how did you guys feel? I might have talked this about this already, but going back to the whole DCU, watching The Rock play Black Adam, uh, I'll admit it, I don't have much knowledge of Black Adam. All I know is from little things I've seen from playing that video game, that fighting game, Injustice 2. And then whatever I heard from my buddy Kevin talk about, I know that's one of his favorite characters. But it feels like The Rock playing Black Adam. Okay. It, it Just from the trailers alone, it feels like I'm watching another Rock movie and not a DCU movie. It just feels like, you know, he has these, these witty one-liners and he's just showing off his towering physique now in tights. And I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hyped for it. And it, and it's really hard for me to get hype for a DC movie, you know. Barring if, if I know that it's coming from James Gunn or it's something, uh, uh, anything of the of the likeness that is Suicide Squad, because that when they lean into the the, the comedy side, I'm all for it, and I really like it. It it, it, it could even be kind of serious too, kind of how it was with you know winter soldier and civil war and and end game not end game yeah infinity war infinity ward 
Infinity Ward. Infinity Wars. <laughs> they can freaking Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, guys. Anyways, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for for right now. I just wanted to, wanted a rant about what I've been watching, get caught up because I didn't want to. I, like I said, I recently just watched uh, Thor, and I recently watched The Boys and Obi Wan. I stopped. I I went one episode and a half into Miss Marvel, and I stopped. I just didn't care. I never felt like this character was even strong. I always felt like she was... I only knew she existed when I was playing a video game called... Um, a Marvel video game called Marvel Alliance 3. And they have a whole roster of characters. I'm like, Miss Marvel? I'm like, like Carol Danvers Marvel? Like, no, this is Miss Marvel. She likes Captain Marvel so much. She gets her moniker like that. And she's super stretchy. I'm like, okay. So I was kind of expecting, okay, a little super stretchy teenage girl. Cool. And then I watched the series. I'm like, oh, she got her powers from a bracelet. And the powers were inside of her this whole time. And now she has to adapt to high school life. Okay. I'm, I think I'm done. I'm f- I, you know, I'll wait till it's completely done. And I'll ask my friends, like, okay, what's the rundown? Who did they introduce? And, and what should I, what's the, any notes that I should take on this character? Because, like, I just, I just don't, I don't care. I don't, you know. So I wanted to get that all out the way, guys, before I forget about it. And that's kind of like my been kind of my MO lately. I'll take all these notes on things and just kind of combine them and just go through it and just chit chat and rant and take it from there and, and try not to let it go too far away because uh, the best way for me to stay on top of something is to just record it and then just put it in the archives and then just toss it out when it's ready. But anyways, guys, uh, uh, I will be having I will be going to Comic Palooza. And by the time you hear this, this podcast, Comic Palooza should have been gone and went already. And I'll be just in time for Anime Mood Series. So I'll probably have another episode around that time just to get y'all prepared. So be ready for it, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Any comments, questions, whatever, y'all want to add me, talk about it, discuss it. I'm down for it, guys. Like I said, I'm, it's not coming from a place of, of hate or anything. I just, It just feels like it just becomes virtue signaling, and it just... It doesn't feel organic. It just feels like they're doing it just to just to get to virtue signal. And to me, that just isn't a way to do it, man. Be, be yourselves. To write a good story, and and that's the that's the most important thing. Most important thing about this, uh, especially about these franchises. These stories are so good. Like, why are you twisting it for something else beyond that? Just leave. Just leave it up to a good narrative. That's how you guys have to do. But anyways, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you guys didn't agree with me, that's fine. If you do agree with me, agree with some parts, that's fine too. Talk to me about it. Let's let's let's, let's see what's going on, and, and we could talk about it and, and just have a, a civil discourse. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening, the rest of your week. Get some rest. Uh, I know I will, and I will see y'all next time. Bye, guys. Peace out. <laughs>